Okay. Now we're recording. Okay. So go ahead, Adam. Thanks. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about how to align your electrophysiology data to your um, histology data. So um, I'll give a brief introduction. I'll then talk about um, how to do this with, with 3D histology data with some of the tools that we've developed. And then Pearl's going to talk about how to do this with um, her talk for 2D histology. Um, and then Mayo's going to talk about what they do with the IBL. And um, so I, mean, I think it's relatively obvious kind of why you want to do this. Um, but I mean, you've but at this point, learn how to kind of report from potentially hundreds of cells at once. Um, but crucially, you need to know where these recordings are from. And you need to know for each of these units that you isolate, you need to know where in the brain uh, these recordings are coming from. And also, if you're recording from multiple animals or you're recording from multiple probes and single animal, you want to be able to combine this information in a single kind of reference frame. And an anatomical atlas reference frame um, is usually a good solution for this. Um, and so we heard kind of earlier how you sort of do this, how you kind of do the imaging, but um, the general principle is that you label your probe, your probe with some dye, um, usually dye eye or kind of one of its derivatives that might be fixable. Um, you then kind of carry out your experiment as normal with this dyed probe. Um, and then after the experiment's over, you uh, remove the brain and you image it in some way. I mean, I think pretty much now we have tools that will cater with any kind of imaging technique. There's 3D techniques, which um, our tool will cover things like light sheet microscopy and clear tissue or serial section microscopy. Um, but there's tools that will cover kind of 2D data that you might get from confocal or wide field or slot scanners. And then um, you should get something in this case with a 3D image, something that looks like this. This is a whole brain image and um, just with a single neuropixels probe track here. Um, which is brightly fluorescent. Um, and then there's kind of a common feature with all these analysis pipelines. You take your raw data. Again, this is a serial section um, image of a mouse brain that's just been cut in half, the image that is not the brain. Um, and there's a probe insertion site here. Um, and then you register this data to an atlas. And by registration, I just kind of mean that you reorient, you rescale, and you kind of warp your, your sample brain so that it um, aligns with the atlas template image perhaps from the um, Allen template, and potentially do it the other way around as well. So you can warp your um, atlas to your template, to your sample brain. Um, then you segment out your probe in some way. This might be kind of an automatic approach, or it might be manual, just like key points along the track. Then you can align your recordings um, to the anatomy. So in this kind of schematic here from this, from this probe here, you can see that each of these, all these probe sites are in primary visual cortex and these are in the hippocampus. And then you can use these transforms as well to analyze and visualize all your probes together. So here we've got seven recordings from primary visual cortex that we've, from seven different animals that we've overlaid in the model of the Allen mouse brain and kind of overlaid them um, with primary visual cortex. Um, so the tools that I'm going to talk about are part of the um, Brain Globe ecosystem of tools, um, which I won't go into like in much detail, but basically there are two tools that are relevant here. One is BrainReg, which is this 3D um, atlas registration tool that will warp your sample to an atlas space and also will allow you to segment your brain based on atlas annotations. And BrainReg Segment, which is a kind of a general purpose bulk structure segmentation tool that wasn't it's not built specifically for neuropixels probes, but can be used to segment them. Um, and it's part of this ecosystem of tools, which includes this Brain Globe Atlas API, so which provides atlases from multiple different sources. So potentially different uh, atlas annotations in this case, or different species or different organs, not really relevant to um, neuropixels, but potentially. Um, and so what you do is you register data from um, register your data with the reference image from the atlas um, and then segment out your structure of interest, in this case, in your pixels probe. You can provide some kinds of tools to analyze it. And then we have also a tool called Brain Render that allows you to visualize any of your data um, in atlas space. Um, and we validated this approach, um, but I kind of, in general, I think you really shouldn't sort of trust what validation people show in papers. You should validate it against your own data, but this is all in this paper and we'll share the slides um, if you're interested. And um, basically we see kind of, I think, well, similar to what a lot of people see, we kind of see that the histology and the electrophysiology are pretty close kind of within sort of 60, 70 microns of each other. Um, so kind of a brief demo of the software. Um, I thought I was being clever by recording this um, demo in advance, and then I realized that the Windows default Windows recording tool doesn't kind of record any of the other pop-ups. So you might see some sort of ghost things magically appearing 
the hyperism and um, the basis of it is here. So our tools are all available as plugins for Napari. Um, if you're not familiar with Napari, it is a, a multi-dimensional image viewer written in Python. It basically sets out to be a bit like ImageJ, but to leverage kind of the image analysis and machine learning capabilities of Python. So you open up Napari, which you can download on any operating system. You then drag your raw data um, into Napari. In this case, this is a 3D whole brain serial section image of a mouse brain. Um, and if we play with the contrast, we can see that there's a probe track here in 3D going through uh, visual cortex and hippocampus, and this is what we want to segment out. Um, and so to do this, we'll open up um, the BrainBridge plugin, which can be installed through this user interface. Um, as long as your data is open here, there's not a lot of parameters. To, there are a lot of parameters available, but you can start off by not really changing any of them. You just need to choose the atlas you want to use and the resolution of the atlas you want to use, the orientation of your data, um, the um, yeah, resolution of your data, then choose where you want the data to be saved. Um, press the run button. The registration can take either kind of 30 seconds in some cases on very low resolution data um, or up to about kind of 40 minutes if you're doing it on very high resolution data with a high resolution atlas. Um, and then, but in this video, it magically pops up. So here, are the, when, the, when the registration is complete, the brain region boundaries will be overlaid onto your image. And we can also add the specific regions, um, in this case, from the Allen. And we can see that, as we thought, this probe track does go through primary visual cortex. Um, but we want to quantify this and know exactly where each of the probe recording sites are. So for this, we use a different plugin. Um, and just for this demo, we're just going to delete all the data, um, close this plugin, and then open up the new plugin, which is called BrainRidge Segment, which basically just takes the output of the last um, step. So you load your um, output directory from the last step. You can do this analysis either in sample space or in atlas space. In this case, we're going to do it in atlas space. So we'll reload the same data back in. Um, the only difference is everything will be warped to the Allen reference frame to the CCF, which is why you should see that the brain is kind of slightly different shape now and it's um, perfectly symmetrical and perfectly aligned. Um, but the data is still the same data. Um, it's fine for these kind of shape-based analyses, but I wouldn't do any um, sort of fluorescence intensity quantification. Um, so here we can see that the probe track again through visual cortex, and we have two different options here, two different panels, one for region segmentation um, and one for track tracing, which is any kind of one dimensional track that you want to trace to the brain, in this case using your pixels probes. And you basically just trace along the probe in 3D, taking care to make sure you kind of hit the center of the probe, uh, center of the di track, assuming that the di would diffuse kind of equally um, in both all around. Go along the probe until you get to the end. Um, and then once you've got to the end, you can kind of double check. You can add more points if you need. Um, there's a few parameters to choose. Um, basically, what the trace track button that we're going to press here, what this will do is it will connect the dots essentially using some linear or nonlinear fit. Um, and then you all you really need to choose is how many points you want this fit to be, because basically this will correspond to how many different points along that track the brain region will get reported as. So because it's kind of a general purpose tool, it's not specific to neuropixels, but if you had, you know, um, a one centimeter track and you wanted to just report 10 points along it, every micron, you choose 10 here. If you wanted to do it every um, micron, you do um, 10,000. So you click trace tracks, it joins them up um, and makes this blue line that's kind of hard to see. Um, but if we just kind of turn the data turn the, kind of the raw data off and just look at it in 3D, which I think is what's coming next in the video, you can see that it is a, it's a line, it's a track, it's a slightly curved line. Um, even if your probe is perfectly straight within the brain and hasn't bent at all, often you'll find that the probe in atlas space is actually bent. And that's kind of normal because there's some nonlinear warping between um, your raw data and the atlas. And then the output basically is just a table for each position along the probe, it tells you where um, in the probe in the um, in the brain you are. And typically, you can make sure that these positions um, lined up with either some um, physical dimension that you care about if you know how, because you know how long the probe is, or you more often know how much of the probe you've inserted. Um, and so you can then report every region um, all along the probe and do whatever kind of stats and analysis you want. 
Um, this tool, if you're interested, can also be used for other things. So we've used it for like physiological probes. And also you can export your um, probe tracks out into this format to visualize in brain render. And um, you can use it for other things like optical fibers and viral injections. And it's all part of this brain web ecosystem of tools. Um, so there's self-detection algorithms and lots of other stuff that all works together. Um, and they all work with, all these tools work with lots of different atlases. Um, lots of which won't be relevant here, but um, some of them might be. So there's multiple mouse brain atlases with different annotations or different reference images. So there's one, for example, with a, a light sheet template. Um, and there's also a rat atlas. And uh, one thing that might be useful, I think some of the other tools don't have, is it works with um, developing mouse brain atlases. So you can do this at different developmental time points. Um, and there's more atlases being used all the time. So um, there's information here. There's a written tutorial of how to do this. Um, there's links to the code, there's a website. If you have any questions, um, if you ask at this um, image.sc forum and tag it with Brain Globe, I'll answer your question. Um, but you're welcome to get in touch with me either by email or um, get to Twitter and I'll answer your questions. Um, and we'll share these slides so you can get all these links. Um, so that's everything from me. And I think um, Pearl is going to talk about uh, software herbs now. Hello, so the, the software herbs, oh wait, now I need to share my screen. Right on. So herbs is this software which previously I showed that you can plan trajectories, not just that, you can also register your probe tracks, um, tetrodes, optical fibers, and also viruses, similar to what um, Brain Reg is doing. Uh, so if uh, you can, uh, go ahead and download herbs uh, on our GitHub page, which is uh, linked on the Slack channel. And we have a cookbook. Uh, we had a bit of a um, name play with herbs and cookbook. And we have a couple of recipes here for um, cooking herbs. <laughs> So in these recipes, so it will show you how to download atlases. So you can either, so currently we only have uh, uh, the rat atlas and the mouse brain atlas. You can um, go through the cookbook and find uh, illustrations of how to do it. But uh, right now I will uh, get you back to the GUI. So I've gone ahead and assigned points. Um, these landmarks around the atlas and uh, the histology image here, which has a probe track going through that you can see here in red. And once that's done, I'm going to transfer all these points and you can see that you can slide and see with the opacity, whether you like this or not. And you can also move these points. So these triangulated points and make sure that your um, landmark points match uh, correctly to your desire and accept it and then go back to the probe maker that we saw uh, during the talk three where I was showing you how to plan trajectories and use that on your histology just two points accept and mm, so you go here, accept, and you have a merged probe that shows you um, the angle of, at which it was inserted, the uh, length of probe uh, that's inside the brain from the 2D histology that uh, we've plugged in and uh, the regions that it has traveled and the estimated channels that it's uh, recorded from. So this is a kernel section of uh, one slice um, probe track, but sometimes it's not the case. We have multiple slices with um, uh, the probe track. So to do that, you go to section 6.6 .6 on our cookbook and you can see uh, we have both NeuroPixel 2 uh, instructions of how to uh, register probe tracks, as well as how to go through multiple slices. So you basically add another slice and 
slide through the atlas, which looks like this. So we made a little video and we will upload it on our GitHub um, um, very soon. And you just have to play around a little bit and repeat the steps from before. Go through the desired atlas slice that you think could match well with your histology slice and do the same steps and another probe. And you merge it to have um, sli um, different slices, uh, dif uh, probes traversing through different slices. And this I didn't show you in the, um, so you go to the 3D window here and you can visualize it in 3D space. And you can do the similar similar thing steps for registering virus or any uh, anything that basically you want to put inside the brain. Yeah, over to Maya now. Thank you. Um, share my screen. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a tool that we've developed uh, as part of the International Brain Laboratory, um, and it allows you to use electrophysiology features that you've recorded um, on your probes to localize uh, the position of the electrodes in the brain. Um, so as Adam and Pearl have shown in their tools, uh, you can reconstruct like the 3D location of the probe in the brain and get an estimate of where all of the electrodes, uh, the brain regions of all of the electrodes. Um, but as an additional step, this tool allows you to look at the features, the electrophysiology features that have been recorded on the probe and see if the assigned brain ranges make sense in terms of expected uh, features that you uh, expect to see in given in certain brain areas. Um, so this diagram basically shows the concept of the tool. So uh, you have your probe and it's been assigned a number of different brain ranges that it passes through. And that's shown on the left. And alongside, you also have the firing rate that's been recorded on the probe. Um, so as you can see in the center, we have this white area, which is basically an air gap in the brain. And in this area, we don't expect to see any neural activity as there aren't any neurons. Um, but in the current alignment that's been done, we can see that there is uh, some activity here. So what we want to do is basically apply reference lines, both on the histology image and also on the electrophysiology. Um, and shift the location of the electrodes to positions where we think they should match. Um, so in this example here, we've shifted the electrodes up in the brain, and we can now see this kind of quiet area in the firing rate matches this air gap uh, to see. Um, so for this, we've developed this tool, uh, which we call the Electrophysiology Alignment Tool. Um, and I'll now give you a brief demo of it. Um, yeah. So once you open the GUI and load in your data, you should see a display like this. Um, so it basically has two panels. So on the left-hand side, we have all of the electrophysiology features. And in the center and right panel, we show the histology, so where the electrodes are in the brain. So on the left-hand side in the electrophysiology features, we have three panels. Uh, so we have one that shows kind of properties across uh, a variable. So in this case, time of session we show a kind of a single line plot that has average activity across the session and also uh, different features overlaid onto the geometry of the probe. Um, and so in addition to these plots, there's a number of different displays that you can see and they can all be found in these drop-down menus. So for example, um, we can look at the cross-correlation of activity across depth or we can look at the individual cluster plots and see where the clusters are and look at their amplitude uh, along the x-axis and then the color denotes their firing rate. Um, so there's a number of different things that you can change. Um, and in this histology plot on the left-hand side, uh, we have the estimate of the electrodes. And as you align, you'll notice that this is going to shift uh, as you scale and move the electrodes. And on the right-hand side, this will stay constant and it just provides like a reference. So you can see how much, how much things have changed. And um, in addition, we have this kind of coronal slice of the brain which shows where your electrodes are located. Um, so everything is 
And this tool is based on reference lines that I was referring to earlier. And these can be added by double clicking on one of the panels. And you get a pair of reference lines on this electrophysiology panel and also on the histology panel. And these can basically be moved so that you can align regions that you think should match. So in this example here, um, we can see on the bottom of the probe that we have quite a high firing rate, which then stops quite abruptly around 1,500 micrometers up. Um, and so we can say that this is probably uh, where the thalamus ends and we go into this root dentate gyrus uh, molecular layer regions. So we can move our reference lines to the positions that we think. Um, and then apply a fit button, uh, which will then shift down or shift uh, the location of the electrodes. So if you focus on this panel here, if we go before we've applied the fit and after we've applied the fit, we can see that the electrodes have moved up significantly in the brain. Um, so another feature that we can look out for is these kind of high firing rate regions. And typically these correspond to pyramidal cell layers. Um, and from literature and things, we know that uh, both in the hippocampus CA1 and also in layer 5 of cortex, um, we expect to see these layers. So I can add another couple of reference lines um, and roughly align them to the middle of the CA1 region and this one uh, around layer 5 of cortex and then apply it. And after you've applied um, more than three lines, you'll notice that um, the electrodes are not only shifted, but they are also scaled basically along the probe according to the kind of fit of the lines that you've placed, which you can see in this bottom plot here. And you can also see the fit that's been applied um, to the different regions uh, in this central panel. Um, and in the title here, you can see the scaling factor that's applied. So in this case, we've applied around a 0.9% uh, or 90% scaling factor uh, to the electrodes in general. Um, and once you're happy with your alignment, you can then just hit this upload button confirm and it will save uh, the new location of your electro channels and their coordinate in 3D space and also the brain region that they've been assigned onto a, a file on your local system. Um, and you can then use those for your own. Um, so here I've just collated um, a list of different resources for this tool. Um, so we have uh, the link to the code base that we use and also a wiki that has all of the instructions of how to use it. And in that, we have an install instructions that uh, walks you through how to install the relevant Python environment. And also, we provide um, a set of sample data, which you can download um, and load in and get familiar with the tool and just play around with it. Uh, we also have some detailed usage instructions um, because there's a lot of shortcuts and little tricks you can do in the tool. And this has just like a list of all of the uh, different things that are available. Um, and also, uh, we have a section on how you can prepare your data uh, to be read into the alignment GUI because it requires a specific format of um, files. We provided some kind of extractive functions where you can pass in your data and it will be processed um, into a format that can be used. Um, I also gave a slightly longer talk last year um, on the same topic. And in here I go over in a bit more detail about different features that you can look out for, different electrophysiology features and also um, how to prepare your data. So if you're interested, you can refer to that. Um, yeah, and I just want to thank everyone who uh, helped me develop the GUI and all of the funding. And thanks for listening and any questions.